NFL football players is this one test. So it's an overhead squat where you're really looking at uh, mobility um, of the thoracic spine, of the shoulders. You're looking at flexibility around the hips. It's really a great test. Well, how do the patients fail? Well, they fail because they come up on their toes. They don't have the thoracic uh, mobility to go into extension. They can't bring their arms overhead. There are a number of ways. So how do we look at the core? Well, this is a, a thrower that um, he's at now pitching in AAA. He throws, throws 94 miles an hour. And this is, he's right-handed. So you have him do a single leg squat. He can't control his pelvis, can't control his femur. So he's got gluteus medius weakness, he's got core weakness, and that's the leg he stands on when he throws the ball. If you have a tight psoas, you have tight lats. So watch how on the right especially, he, goes, he does it on the left, but worse on the right, as he goes to stretch his psoas, he goes into hyperextension of his low back. And think kinetic chain and how this is going to be affecting the scapulothoracic region. One of the biggest problems I see is tightness of the pec minor, which causes an anterior tilt of the scapula, which causes a lot of, uh, and frequently will cause subacromial impingement. So one of the things I look at is lateral scapular slide. Ben Kibler's lateral scapular slide test has, is looking at the shoulder in three positions. I think it's more efficient to look in one position. I have the patient put their hands on their hips and the scapula wings. When I look at the patient supine to look at pec minor tightness, the, in this case, this is that 16-year-old pitcher, um, the, the scapula does not come, the humeral head will not come down to the table. So here's another, this is a, when this guy, boy was 15, look at, to get his scapula down, how much his shoulder has to bounce up. So that's a tight pec minor. The, tight, the pec minor in pitchers will sometimes be shortened, and that's a very significant problem. Let's talk for a moment about scapular dyskinesis versus dyskinesia, because even at this meeting, I've heard the term dyskinesia being used. When we, what we look at is scapular dyskinesia, a dyskinesis. Dyskinesia is the kind of movement that you would have with Parkinson's. So it's, it's involuntary um, uh, movements without intention that's dyskinesia. So it's dyskinesis. Um, so looking at scapular humeral rhythm, this is a, a high school water polo player that um, with a right, with right shoulder problem, and if you didn't look from the back, you would say she had normal range of motion, but watch what she does with her scapula. Okay, that's her, that's her abnormal rhythm. She had a slap lesion. Now, there are compensations. This is that boy with the tight pec minor. Watch his lumbar spine as he goes to elevate. Not so bad on his non-dominant side. A little bit of uh, increased lordosis. But on the right, watch what he has to do to get his arm overhead. So it's all connected, and if you don't look there, you won't see it. Then I go to the, uh, the uh, corrective maneuvers. Uh, the scapular assistance test, if you have the patient bring their arms out to the side, he does have scapular dyskinesis. This is a long thoracic mononeuropathy. He cannot get his right arm all the way up, and, and he can't get it up beyond that because of, because of the pain. That's an abduction, and this is in forward flexion. The scapular assistance test is really substituting for the scapular stabilizers, and you're not forcefully pushing on the scapula, but you're just sort of giving it a little proprioceptive advice of where to go. Um, and with that, you can eliminate the pain or decrease the pain and increase the range of motion, and there he's comfortable. So I know this is not a problem with motion except for the, uh, his inability to control his scapula. The other test that I use is a scapular retraction test, and this can be done actively, it can be done passively. Test for rotator cuff strength, and he'll demonstrate some right-sided weakness in supraspinatus, and we can debate the open can versus closed can way of testing. But clearly, he has weakness, and you can see his, he can't control his scapula. <clears throat> in this case, I'm showing it as an active scapular retraction test. When we ask the patient to uh, put his scapula in position, he's holding it a little bit too tightly, because, and I couldn't see from the back. But watch how much stronger he is when you test his external rotators and when you test his supraspinatus. So, Somebody that presents with rotator cuff weakness, if you can improve their strength by doing a scapular attraction test, then you know it's not a cuff problem, it's a scapular problem. And serratus anterior, I test that. I don't do a wall push-up. Um, I test them eccentrically, so the left side is asympta asymptomatic. I test them at 90 and 120. Now I usually just go to 120 and see what he's got there. But you can see how much he wings. When I put him up at 120 or 110 degrees, he just starts to drift down before I even get to do it. 
So clearly that's a serratus anterior problem. Some, in some of the physical therapy literature, it's referred to as the elbow flexion test when it's done at 90 degrees. I look for GERD side to side difference because of, uh, of loss of internal rotation. Um, in pitchers, it's associated with decreased performance um, and um, disability, and some of them will go on to uh, have slap tears. And then I'll do the structural testing, looking for the sulcus sign and internal and external rotation, which will uh, assess the rotator interval and load and shift testing. I'll do it in the sitting, seated position. Um, and this is an asymptomatic, the asymptomatic side on this uh, gymnast. And then I'll do them in the lateral decubitus position, and I'm looking to get a feel for what is the capsule like, and, can I, and are there labral clicks or grinds? Um, what's the effect of internal and external rotation? What will get tight, what won't? And I'm trying to determine whether the patient is lax or unstable. In choreographing the exam, you set it up and rehearse it the way, the way you want to. Um, that, I mean, whatever works for you. Um, I tend to do a lot of the observation uh, during the history, the 14-year-old uh, athlete that's sitting slumped over and with very poor posture. Um, if you want to refer to it as protracted scapulae, um, uh, you make that observation early. Um, but you look at them standing. You do, I do the provocative maneuvers standing rather than seated. Then I'll have the patient sit down, assess the capsule and labrum other provocative tests that I can't do standing, and then I'll put them supine, turn them in the lateral decubitus position, look at instability, and then I do my palpation last because I don't want to upset the joint. <clears throat> the take-homes here are you want to make sure that you can see the scapula. Ideally, I'd like my patient uh, in a pair of shorts, uh, either with a tank top sports bra for a female or a no top for a male. Um, you've, you've got to listen to the patient. Um, you want to make sure that you choreograph the patient, the exam, otherwise you're going to be very inefficient and you're not going to get through the exam. You want to identify the mechanical flaws that you think are causing the clinical sequelae. Look carefully at alignment and posture. The therapists have been doing this for years. As orthopedists, we, we have not. <clears throat> and then look at core and lumbopelvic strength and stability. Look at muscle imbalances. You've got to look in the lower extremities and especially around the hips and pelvis. Look at movement patterns, and I've been accused uh, of being a Sarmonite because I, I actually look at that. What provocative maneuvers cause the, uh, the symptoms, and then what corrective maneuvers can you do um, to, uh, to eliminate or de decrease the symptoms? So it's important that you look at the entire picture because otherwise you don't know what you're going to be missing. <laughs> okay. Thanks for listening. <laughs>